This podcast is brought to you by Audible, which is giving away a free audiobook to listeners of the Engadget Eurocast. If you appreciate this show, the best way to show your support is to head on over to audible.com forward slash Engadget. You can download The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Shaban or The Signal and the Noise by Nate Silver and listen to it anytime, totally for free. Go to audible.com forward slash Engadget for your free audiobook. Welcome to the Engadget Eurocast, sponsored by Audible. I'm Dan Cooper. I'm Matt. And I'm Jamie Rigg. And this week we're talking about the Lumia 720, which Jamie has just finished. So what did you think, Jamie? Um, yeah, I really liked it. I really liked it. I wanted to really like it. Um, maybe a better description... Uh, as I've mentioned on previous Eurocasts, I have a 620 that I use from time to time um, and quite like it. And the 720 was definitely a step up from that in terms of design. Uh, the screen's fantastic, uh, even though it's 800 by 480, which is the same as the um, 620, but it's spread over... Uh, an extra half an inch of screen, so I was expecting to um, be a little disappointed with with uh, with it in comparison to the 620. But I I really liked it. Um, the only the only problem being is the price in relation to what you're looking at inside. Uh, it's the yeah, what's same. It, what's, it, what's it like at the moment? Like SIM free? How much do you have to pay for it? Um, well, in the review, I used uh, O2 as an example uh, on Pay As You Go because uh, that's a good, I guess, good relative pricing because they have, you know, a ton and, and, of Windows And more importantly, phones. they have it available at the moment as well. So if you're going to buy it anywhere in the UK, it would have to be Well, you have to, yeah. It's, it's yeah. exclusive. But, the, yeah, the problem is is it's £300 on Pay As You Go. Um, and the probably the... the most shocking comparison is that uh, the Hawaii, um, not Hawaii, Huawei. 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 I always say it how it's written. Hawaii. Huawei. I just want to say Hawaii. Practice. Um, if we're going to improve your broadcast voice, now's the time to do it, Jamie. Huawei. 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 Uh, the so which, which W1. Phone? That's oh, the yes. right one. Yeah, the W1 is £109. Ah, right. Um, as opposed to the Lumia 720 at 300 pounds, and the uh, Huawei actually okay. has a 1.2 gigahertz, uh, or its Snapdragon S4 Plus is clocked at 1.2 gigahertz, I mean, whereas yeah. the Lumias are all one gigahertz. Um, I mean, yeah. Did you find there was much difference going from the 620? Because I know you often used it as your like your main proper phone. You weren't even like sneaking around an iPhone in the back. Often you would that was your de facto phone. Did you feel yeah. any kind of performance difference or No, absolutely nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'd imagine. Um, uh, as I said, that's that's the main problem with is, is the price because of the internals. Uh, really it's the same 520 620 720. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's the same for a lot of these Windows phones. They all there's like two flavors of Windows Phone, isn't there? Really, there's the yeah. the top flagship ones that will have something different, and then there's all the same, and that includes like high, mid, all the way down to entry level Windows Phone eight devices. So they always have the same spec, the same resolution, predominantly the same camera resolution. Oh, but that's my dying question: Epic selfies. Tell me about <laughs> epic the epic selfies. selfies. Uh, the, so the one point three megapixel uh, wide angle lens on the front, uh, not. Not that epic. As, Not no. That epic. Uh, outside, outside. But again, I mean, I, I, when you're looking at phone cameras, it's really hard to, to kind of, knock them. For for well, the, inside the front quality, well, well, not 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 only that, but I feel back facing cameras as well. It's like it, it, you can always get really good shots or really good looking shots out of any camera, any phone camera, really. Oh, nearly, yeah, I've, had some, I've, rev I've reviewed some absolutely crappy ones that even in amazing sunlight has been absolutely atrocious. Well, uh, sure. Generally I, speaking, I, especially with Nokia, days, with Nokia as well, yeah. especially, yeah, you're they have they have a. Um, uh, quite a good track record w with all their, you know, the pure view 808 and kind of just pushing the boundaries a bit. I remember I actually had one of the very first camera phones that was a, I think it was the first 
a, a ever built by anyone. Button. No one had ever it tested it or touched a camera phone <laughs> until Mr. Rig. Well, you, you know what I mean. It was a massive Nokia candy bar slider. Anyway, uh, to get back to the point, um, not so epic selfies. Uh, yeah, not so epic selfies in in sunlight. Kind of, uh, you can get some serviceable ones, but inside, under natural light, the exposure compensation on it, the the auto setting. Oh, does it give you that kind flutters, of weird skin rash? Really thing? flutters. Uh, oh, right. I don't know. It's like watching uh, um, the the it's bars like roll turning, down turning an old the, TV. Uh, contrast down, isn't it? Because I remember I remember seeing it when you were showing me and. Like at one point, it captures a perfect indoor image, and then the, the contrast keeps. I'm sure whatever Dan said was a very important point, but we've uh, lost his audio, so we're going to have to carry on. Um, did you try out the kind of the weird like pudicura fil filter things that kind yeah, of yeah? You mean the glam your skin glam makes you more handsome. Yeah, I did. It was really weird. It's uh, it's it's quite fun to play with. I was I mean, using it um on my dog as well. <laughs> so I was turning it round and I was getting his face Does, in the shot. Do, do it human algorithms dog. work on dogs? Then did, did the dog look better? Uh, yeah, because it's more it's more of a it, it's more of a filter thing. Yeah, it's, it's it? like I a matter effect for half it of it, looks, isn't it? It did look weird. It looked like it was trying to turn the dog human. If you know what I mean. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, front-facing camera not great. Of course, Nokia Glam Me great to play with, but it's uh, it's it's weird in a way. Yeah, it? well, I think like me, you don't share that many epic selfies with people, so it's kind of yeah, hard I'm to find. I'm not an epic selfie kind of guy. Um, not, I, I, and, I find that really hard to believe. <laughs> and uh, everyone listening now would think you are the epic selfie editor for Engadget. Well, I mean, Europe. Europe. You know, let's, the, the, let's the, narrow it down. The looks <laughs> would make you think that, but. No, I'm very modest and, and, uh, and humble. Modest and shy and humble. Yeah, I've never heard that before. Uh, but, I mean, what else? What else about it? Compared to... You've played with all the uh, other Lumias as well. Does it fall as squarely as you'd imagine, like below the 820 and above the 620? Because I found the 820 was a kind of huge kind of miss. I'd probably even put the 720 above the 820 because of that slimmer profile. Yeah, I, yeah. In terms of um, specs, obviously it doesn't quite match up, but it, it definitely feels like they've learned lessons from both the 920 and the 820 and applied them to the 720. Um, which is why I, I suppose, uh, you know, numbers aside, you could consider it. You could consider it a, you know, the mid tier, I suppose. Um, but it just looks great. It looks and feels great. And as I, as I said in my review. You wouldn't struggle to to carry this around for a long period of time if you signed up for a contract or something. It is it really is nice to use. I mean, it's it's nice and slim, like the eight X HTC's eight X is very nice and kind of there's barely any silhouette to it. The way it's kind of curved around. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it, it's very it, nice. It looks and things. feels a lot like that, um, yeah. but just with a Nokia, like the eight X was taken outside and had the Nokia kicked into it. If you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, just like it's, they just like uh, gave it a quick shave, a new hairstyle, changed the logo, and just that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. That'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, but it definitely <laughs> feels like a distinct Lumia device, and of course, you get all the Lumia imaging stuff. I yeah, mean, we yeah. already talked about Glammy, so there is just, there is that. Think, Jamie, this is just know. your second Windows Phone Eight review. You'll get to t repeatedly talk about all these features yet again. As soon as another Windows Phone 8 one device comes, comes out. Up. Well, I'm yeah. hoping that I'll have more to talk about on the software side. Yeah, hopefully there'll um, be some... It's about time they've added some new bits and pieces, actually. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. looking forward to 8.1 Windows Phone. I ca I'm calling it Windows Phone 8.1. I have no idea, you know, what what the, the real name will be called or whatever, but um, it, almost a uh, fictional update. To fix all the things that everything. I see fix wrong, yeah, just just everything. Fix some stuff. I mean, so what was your one major bugbear from like going back to Windows Phone eight? Well, not going back to, but rigidly sticking for a week on a new phone. What what was the frustration that kind of? The frustration initially was setting it up. Um, I'm invested in Google uh, mainly. I mean, I'm actually. Uh, switching between my S3 and an iPhone at the moment, and everything's set up on there fine. But I'm all my contacts and everything like that are are in Google 
essentially. I'm I'm a I'm a Google user, I suppose, from that perspective. And when you're setting up the iPhone, it's really easy. I mean, it's not you still have to to read one thing that says, okay, this is how you import Cardav or Caldav or or something like that. Um, but it's very easy. Windows Phone eight doesn't have the same the, the same amount of support. So when you're linking multiple Gmail calendars, for instance, which of course I've got my personal calendar, Engadget calendars, etc., um, you really need to know what you're doing and look at forums and things like that. And yeah, and yeah. when Windows Phone seems to be is out there fresh, and I guess trying to draw a new era of smartphone users in that that kind of makes sense because you're not really committed to anything uh, whereas oh, me so many people are now committed to Gmail though it seems like such an odd oversight I mean uh, Darren's written an editorial about the whole lack of nice you know decent Google apps on Windows Phone and it's still mm. that case at the moment isn't mm. this the, that's just another facet of this same issue unfortunately but yeah that's the kind of stuff they need to solve really they just need to be it feels like they've got to be They've got to share better. You know, it's like a playground. and Yeah, well, like, what um, I used, or what the uh, line I used in my review, but I actually took out, I slimmed the software section down a hell of a lot um, because obviously a lot of people know about Windows 8, about um, uh, problems, etc. And I kind of went, did a whole overview of my experience of Windows 8, which probably it wasn't quite appropriate for the review, but how I worded it was... Uh, Google and um, Microsoft are like the warring families in Romeo and Juliet, but you're the one that's stuck in the middle killing yourself. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad <laughs> you got rid of that line. Yeah. <laughs> I get what you mean, though. Yeah. You're, yeah you know, it's, um, you're the the person that, that suppers isn't good. Well, I'm sure, you know, in the long run, one of them will. But at the moment, it's just stopping more people from coming to... Windows Phone. It's very hard for me to recommend Windows Phone to people, apart from, oh, if you like how the handset looks, that's probably the best reason to buy into it. Like, they've yeah. got some really good-looking phones, Nokia and HTC. Even the, even the Huawei W1 is a pretty tasty phone in these kind of acid colours. Mm. Kind of desirable for a 109 phone. The AS is, is great as well. Yeah, yeah, especially. Um, but yeah, actually, something else that came Came up on the news about uh, Nokia, Nokia again in the Lumia 720, especially is this um, the high amplitude mics. Did you ever use it, uh, like the video recording? What do you think of the uh, the sound recording when you were? Yeah, sound recording's great actually. I was surprised uh, there's no secondary mic. I noticed that there's no secondary mic. There's just a primary mic. Um, but it's really it's really decent, isn't it? It's like the um, I mean that's what I'm trying to get to here is the HTC one also has a very similar setup with these very tasty dual membrane mics that can kind of take a lot of vocal damage. They can yeah, kind of yeah, soak I, it all up. In, of course, in terms of when I was on the phone, I, it, it's hard to ask someone what the call quality is like when, when they're not used to using a lot of different phones or, or don't really know what you're looking for when you post that question. Um, but uh, looking back through the sample videos after I'd taken them, it was amazing how, how crisp it was. And um, yeah, unfortunately, Dan has completely just ditched us. I can't believe he did this to us. Mm. We're literally in a boat without a paddle now. Um, but sorry, like I was hinting at earlier, then th th there's this issue about these are high amplitude mics and the fact that um, HTC have apparently used the same component that Nokia kind of exclusively developed for itself uh, alongside with um, ST Microelectronics. Microelectronics, yeah. Yes, we'll never forget that name now. Um, I've actually had to write it about eight times in the last 24 hours, so yeah, I'm never ever going to forget that <laughs> name. And the issue seems to be, it's kind of resolved itself now by the end of the day, and it looks like Nokia will have exclusivity on these specific microphones uh, for another 10 months, which means if HTC were planning to make any more ones, which we presume they would be because they've had so many issues with uh, <laughs> supply chains up until now, they'll have to find either a different supplier or some different mic tech for their new phones. And I mean... Is, is there an option, wasn't there an option for them? Um, I mean, I looked at this briefly when when we first kind of saw it, so, so I don't know how much uh, detail you garnered through digging, um, but isn't there an option to pay um, uh, like a, a legal fee 
of some kind per microphone. I mean, presumably, yeah, that like uh, HTC could strike a deal, I guess, with um, Nokia, with Nokia and, I suppose, and yeah. the component makers. I mean, that's the point. They've co-developed this chip, so it was more HTC got access to all this hard work that Nokia presumably put in to get this very high-quality audio. And the HTC One is, again, very well regarded when it comes to uh, audio recording. So, yeah, I, either they could shop around for a different uh, chipset, make their own, um, or kind of, yeah, just stump up the cash to get um, access to the same ones they've had in existing HTC Ones. I mean, I just kind of feel sorry. It's starting to make me love the HTC One a little bit more. I like the underdog, and mm. I can't think of much more of an underdog when it comes to flagship phones <laughs> than the HTC One at the moment. It's just, it can't catch a break, can it? Yeah, I mean, at least this has been, uh, I guess, kindly resolved in a way. It was Nokia saying, look... Um, you know, we developed this and SD Microelectronics got the essentially the date of the contract wrong. Yeah, it's definitely, um, um, yeah, SD Electro Microelectronics are in the wrong here. I can't believe I forgot yeah. the name. Um, <laughs> it was the judge that was, the judge, wasn't it, or the, the presiding official or whatever, um, the, said the it's queen, right, the queen HTC, of, the, it's not yeah, your the fault. The Queen of Amsterdam it's said. Not, yeah, it's not your fault, HTC, it's not your fault. But yeah. the only problem I foresee for customers potentially is not only potential delays like we've already seen with I believe it was the camera module correct yeah yeah um, but more what if they get worse mics in there well oh, that's know, the thing they yeah, can't you... equal the quality and therefore you're essentially getting a, a second gen HTC you, one you with could even worse, you, know, you can always psychically predict that deep, that random deep dive article by one of those kind of one of those uh, other sites that goes really into the tech, like an antech or something, to kind of really say discriminate between these two models. If they did, if they were discovered to have these different chipsets, you'd hope that HTC they've been in this game long enough to know that's not really worth doing, and so they've got to kind of deliver uh, the same performance across uh, their devices. I mean, I think there's two models of the HTC One going around. One that's literally HSPA only. So I guess they could kind of shift production perhaps to, perhaps to only one line and uh, move from there. I mean, I don't know. I just think, I kind of feel sorry for them now. I don't think there's much more that can go wrong with them. Oh, yeah, I is. guess we probably won't <laughs> learn about what exactly happens. It'll all go on behind the scenes, but it, w it would be interesting in the future. Oh, I, can, I smell at least another, another post or so, another update about it, I'm sure. I'm sure HCC has something to say about it. Danny, you back? Are you alive? I, I think so. I think I I might have uh, solved my connection woes. So. Um, Are we going to try out video, or is that or is that too much? I don't want to. No, see no, his we're face. we're so um, just we're still broadcasting. Face. We're still broadcasting. So. Please, I don't want to see his face. How is it so light where you are? Me. Yeah. I'm facing, I'm facing, it's just my natural glow. Um, <laughs> so Dan, you, Get back you to need your to be host, hostering again. He's gone, hasn't he? All right. So up next, we're going to talk about uh, everything. Every quarterly figures, and they've actually given us a number as to how many Brits are actually using 4G. Can we just play a bit of a feigned ignorance, Jamie? How many people do you think are using 4G in the UK? Oh, I would. I can't remember if you actually total heard guess, about total it. Total punt. Uh, oh. 318,000 ish. It's actually 317,999. But good guess. Uh. Good guess. Well, that's the estimate. Yeah, that's the precise estimate they've given us to how many LT subscribers. And according to previous figures we've heard um, from other uh, tech, tech writers, it seems to be around a 3 to 4% of their total customer base. So, in short, not many, especially when there's been so much uh, advertising push and so much enthusiasm and, you know, everything everywhere have been, the f been able to give out these flagship handsets like the iPhone 5 on LTE, and they're the only network that's able to do it. So yeah, Kevin Bacon's been... Kevin been, Bacon. He's not been earning his key, has he? Well, they should have hired Richard Bacon. I think we all... <laughs> Know that now. He's far more of a uh, bigger. They were a bit footloose with their celebrity. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, did you know that was coming before I even did it? Sorry, Jeff. I nearly lost my connection. Uh. <laughs> I nearly I mean, lost my dinner. <laughs> I've lost any respect I used to have for Jamie. So, what respect? Yeah. 
Go back Maybe. to the figures. <laughs> other, other, uh, uh, apart from the um, ori that original 4G customer figure, that's um, there's not much else to say here. Apparently, revenue is actually down 1.5 percent since the last quarter. Presumably, that's uh, due to the costs they've had of continuing to install and roll out these 4G networks. Um, for me, though, I'm I'm kind of waiting for these finance results a year from now, or as soon as a competitor starts popping out their own 4G waves. Once O2 is kind of in the mix and Vodafone, it'll be interesting to see how what it's like to be the old guard with LTE, whether they've made enough inroads to kind of warrant people going to them over the competition. Do you remember yeah. when when this started, there was a lot of, you know, Vodafone and O2 were saying, oh, God, don't let them, don't let them, Q jump because this will this will it's they'll steal all of our customers. customers. Bad for yeah. customers. Over, uh, through, a, through a thick mustache. Bad for customers. <laughs> precisely. Uh, and they were basically saying, ah, oh, they'll get there first, and and we won't have a chance. Um, and it looks like really their sort of their doom saying hasn't come true because what a shock. You know, three hundred eighteen thousand. You know, it won't set anyone's trousers on fire. Um, but again. See, I keep trying to think, is this a good number or is this a bad number? And I think that, you know, a lot of people are on two year deals. They're not necessarily going to uh give up their um their phone contracts for um LTE, but maybe as uh, you know, there'll be a lot of pick up when like the summer comes and everyone's contract comes up for renewal. Oh, you think what well, do you maybe. think most people go summer by summer? Like a kind of knock on from education? Well, I would think that it would probably quite closely mirror the smartphone buying cycle. So anyone who bought a Galaxy S3, I mean, that came out in... Uh, 1992, May? I think. May? Quite a long May? time ago. Yeah, May 1992. So obviously May 1994 is when everyone's 24-month deal is, is, is coming, yeah. coming due. So, yeah. I think I've, what I've, I'd expected the figure to be larger because, like I said, they got the iPhone 5 on LTE. And I think... That's not difficult to sell. You've got the next generation iPhone on the next generation network. But maybe we'll see people, like you said, it's not been two years since the 4S, so maybe once their 4S contractors run out on a rival phone network, they'll hop across and get the iPhone 5 on a shiny new overpriced network. Unless people are as, as price sensitive as I've been complaining about since the start of time, and actually um, everyone's waiting for other services to come up that's not so the 5s and the well, 5s that's the, yeah. problem. that's the problem with these figures is it's all well and good uh, reporting them which is great but it's really great job dan great job for anything isn't it it's it's you know you're looking at all you're looking at is 318,000 subscribers sub subscribers subscribers <laughs> what does what do, but what does that mean that's the problem is what does that mean and the only thing we can do is 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 guess on that. You That's know? funny because I was actually it's thinking about annoying. It's kind I was of thinking about writing a post called uh, 318 subscribers and what that means for you. And I was just it was just going to be I was going to handwrite a letter to you Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Explain exactly what's going on. With a hand drawn but, graph on it would, graph no, it would literally be scribbly writing in my left hand I'm right handed and just go I don't know. <laughs> and it would trail off at the end. I think I have more subscribers than you. No, no, I've seen your Twitter followers. You haven't. Um, I didn't say Twitter followers, did I? I'm terrible at Twitter. I don't, I've, I, or Twitter hates me or something. I don't know. Um, it's one, it's it's one just, of many things that hates you, Jamie. It, it's, yeah, it's very <laughs> it's baffling. I think I'm too late to the Twitter party to be of any interest to anyone. Um, but in terms of just subscribers to my life story, my path... Um, my successes, my failures. <laughs> <laughs> save it, save it for your uh, discount eight pound the Wake Smith book. Um, yeah, they're they're running on the the LTE of my life. Ugh, I've I've got I've got I don't know what I'm talking him? about anymore. Can do you know what? I, I really wish. Do you know what? We won't kick him. We'll wait until we see him in person next and then kick him physically. The okay. annoying thing is, even if I mute him, I'm sure he's still on the live broadcast. So. He is still on the live broadcast. His mm -hmm. his testimony will still be valid. You can't yes. scrape over it that easily. So um, let's instead talk about John Lewis, um, who are offering six months free internet if you buy a gadget. Um, Jamie, you're a huge John Lewis fan. I am a so. massive John Lewis fan. It's Would true. you give up? I mean, who are you with? Who are you with broadband wise now? I am with B Unlimited, uh, Ooh, okay, which is choice. part of the O2 network. I have been for 
God knows now. I, since, since May 1992. About 10 years now. About 10 That's years enough of the sales pitch, Jamie. Jamie. It's enough of the sales pitch. Um, yeah, um, no, but they've recently been, they've just been bought by Sky, or not just been bought, but recently bought by Sky, um, which out of principle makes me want to switch over anyway. Um, secondly, they're almost certainly going to change the policies and, and things like that. Uh, so I, I, I'm not adverse to picking a new, to, you know, switching broadband providers. And what John Lewis is offering is a, just a, seems like a crazy deal. Uh, how long is the how long is the contract if you do sign up for this um, promo? It's a year and you get six months free. That's not bad, is it? Yeah, but they're well, they're depends, also cause... offering fibre speeds, right? Mm. Fibre speeds, which are thirty nine pounds a month um, at the top end. Uh, so if you sign up for a, you, I guess you sign up for a year contract, you get six months free. You're getting fibre for under twenty quid a month. See, that's tempting. Is it capped? Uh, I don't know. Five, five I haven't looked at it that much. Um, Normally they have two components, I'd assume. No, it's hardly ever capped with fibre, though, just because you're kind of... Yeah. You're likely to consume so much more. Yeah, so that makes it an interesting proposition. And, you know, if you're not a fan after a year, don't continue subscribing. It's no... You know, there's no obligation. A year obligation is... is uh, I thought it was going to be two years. Um, yeah, I, I was expecting it, something along those lines, or at least an eighteen-month stint. Yeah, so no, I think good on good on John Lewis. So the Eurocast deems this a good idea. Can yes. you stamp it? Can you stamp that paperwork, please, Dan? Although I'd have to look into the the fine print because I don't want any fair usage policy or anything. I hate all that stuff. You're ruining the See, stamp, Jamie. You're yeah, ruining our official stamp. <laughs> that's. And the thing is, is that I was going to end this by saying, you know, the Engage at Eurocast, like John Lewis, is never knowingly undersold. And then you start throwing in all these really terrible caveats and stuff. And I'm thinking, no, we can't, we can't, can't right, again. I'll be, I'll be quiet. I'll sit, with you. I'll sit, I'll just sit here nursing my cup of tea. Please. Um, well, whereas me and Matt are going to talk about um, the latest stats that come out of the BBC that have. Can't, can't I just nurse a cup of tea instead? No. <laughs> no. Let's talk tablets. Uh, tablets have overtaken mobiles for the uh, first time. Do you think this is emblematic of a trend, or do you think people just like watching their shows on the toilet on a slightly bigger screen? No one, no, no one admits to watching, even if they do. <laughs> no one admits to watching BBC iPlayer on the toilet. It's just disgusting. And I'm never going near any of your smartphones or tablets ever again. <laughs> um, it just... Yeah. Of course, if you own a tablet, you're <laughs> going to use it more than a phone. If you own both a smartphone and a tablet, if you're going to watch something longer than, I don't know, three minutes, you're going to watch it on the tablet. It's just what? that customers are doing the right thing. What blew customers. me away was um, was that there was the, the figures are something like 43, um, oh, sorry, 41 million requests in a month, which is huge. I mean... It, Kind of, even if that's um, well, you know, about ten percent of them are me and you, Dan. So you know, <laughs> but it's that's like the thing, though. Once, if you watch one thing on iPlayer, you're likely to watch a few more. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And also, now, now I'm using an iPhone a lot more. I've taken to recording on the iOS app at least. You can kind of record these shows, so I can actually stock up on a few before I fly anywhere and watch them at my leisure, which is which super is great. useful. <clears throat> Sometimes you just need to maintain that connection to watch whole things. So to have a recordable function is kind of super useful. You want me to chime in here? Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. Go on, Jamie. Jamie insight. Give me some Jamie um, insight. I will I shut you up. So is it surprising? No, because people are buying more tablets. Uh, is it surprising that people? that many people watch stuff on smartphones? I'd say yes. Who wants to watch all that stuff on smartphones? You, I, you know, I've never watched iPlayer on a smartphone because I, I don't want to stand there like... Oh, can I raise my hand? Was Jamie oh, just not listening to anything I said? No, oh, no, of course I wasn't. Damn it. I'm shaking my head right now. I'm shaking my head. I wish I could see. All I see is this blue outline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that. That's that will be my final word on that. What's your... Okay, what's your favourite show on iPlayer? Me? Yeah. 
The only wow. thing I ever watch on iPlayer is uh, if I miss University Challenge, then I will... You're a, you're, you're a University Challenge watcher? I'm a hardcore University wow. Challenge watcher, yeah. Doesn't that seem really out of character? No, it, do you know what? I get it entirely because... Um, I mean, I see you as a super University Challenge. This is it, and I can't stand University Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gag. I, it's like, you know, him with all of his... Um, with his broken vowels and dropped T's and everything else, you know. He's clearly... <laughs> he's, he's literally University Challenge. <laughs> that's, he a is... good, that's a good Jamie in joke right there. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. I, don't, I, I kind of... I want to expand but upon it. But... Seriously, sorry, yeah, seriously, Jamie, that's your go-to show. On that iPlayer. is my go-to show. Very occasionally I'll jump on for other things. Uh, I often pick up, like... Sometimes um... Top Gear, potentially, yeah. but... The, iPlayer doesn't really, uh, I, you know, I, I, if I want to watch TV, I want to watch TV. Um, if I don't, iPlayer isn't my main repositories of things that I that I keep up with regularly, apart from University Challenge. So University Challenge just happens to be a BBC show that I watch absolutely religiously, and therefore if I miss it, I'll catch up on iPlayer. But I don't, I'm not really a browser, an iPlayer browser or a... Yeah, Jamie, can I, I ask... Jamie, I've got to ask, right, because I think I've got a theory now. Is your viewing habit University Challenge and then all of the Dolph Lundgren direct-to-video action movies that you buy in the pound shop (laughs) and suddenly Um, it balances out? uh, Dolph Lundgren, no. Steven Seagal, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And suddenly we have an explanation as to why he can get away with watching University Challenge. He just washes it away. Just because I'm hella (laughs) clever. It's a palate cleanse between Seagal, <laughs> action-packed montages, and roundhouse kicks to the face. <laughs> it's like having a lemon sorbet in between your starter and your main course at a posh restaurant. I do watch. I do watch other, you know, uh, quiz shows that maybe aren't at that caliber as well. I watch. What's that? What's that one called? Egg brains or um... no eggheads? Eggheads. <laughs> That's the most tragic. TV show I've ever seen. That's the worst. That's the worst. I just sit there and pick holes in them. It's like deal or no deal. You could get it over in literally 10 seconds because all it is is a random number choice and it, mathematical I mean, equation kind of to decide like, how much how much you get offered for the deal. Even with the ability to pick anything we want from the entire back catalogue of whatever's been on the BBC over the last few weeks, you'd still go and watch that kind, those kind of shows. I mean, I do it myself. I just kind of... I'm always surprised when I do it. You'd assume you wouldn't watch like um, schedule filler when you have a choice, but you still kind of do. I'm not sure yeah, it's schedule filler. It's like you want, you want something. It's like, um, it's a really bad metaphor, but imagine going to a foreign country and deciding that you want to eat McDonald's and you've got all of these really clever, um, enjoyable things that you could do, but you find yourself wandering into a McDonald's for your own shame. And, you know, picking schedule filler shows like that is kind of, you know what you want, and so that's the product you're going to go for. You say analogy, Dan. I say real life story of Dan Cooper's life. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like if I've if I've finished uh, just finished for the day or whatever, and I sit down, um, I'm not going to jump straight into some art house intense, you know, flick. I'm going to watch a couple of bubblegum uh, quiz shows, then uh, smash University Challenge, and then get to the art house. Um, <laughs> it's the first time I've. Stuff. That sentence. <laughs> Smash University Challenge. That's kind of Just for the readers, I should add that when Jamie talks about Art House, he does mean um, Transformers Dark of the Moon. <laughs> hey, that's that's kind of deep. I'm actually I'm actually quite a, a, a filmy Buffy kind of guy. So filmy Buffy, you heard right. it here first. Yeah, as in Buffy is my favourite film. <laughs> the eighties thing before the TV show. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you with that, Jamie. I think we can say that's officially the Eurocast's favourite film mm. ever. Where's the rubber stamp sound effect? Ka-chung. Put that in there, please, James. Thank you. <laughs> if, can we... I'm just gonna, if I'm the just rubber gonna... stamp sounds like that. <laughs> I'm going to... This, before this collapses, um, we reviewed the Lytro Lightfield camera last year, and it was a nice toy. I think we all agreed that we'd all we'd all grab one to be a nice toy, but we'd never sort of um, adopt it as our main uh, camera. Um, but it was like it was like four hundred dollars, so it probably would have come over to the UK and been about four hundred quid. But um, 
someone's actually produced an iOS app that does the same job for one pound forty nine. It's called Focus Twist, and Matt, I think you've been um, playing with it. For the yeah, last I've been playing years. with it for about a day. Actually, it's it's kind of really cool. I'm if you're watching the uh, the feed, I'm actually desperately searching around for my phone. I put it somewhere so it wouldn't ring during the cast, but now I can't find it. Yeah, anyway, it's all ruining the cost. Yeah, well, I always I always do. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a clever. So what it does is you, you take a picture and you have to hold yourself super still, and then the camera kind of goes out of focus. It kind of runs the whole gamut of its focal range, taking in pictures. It takes I'm not exactly sure how many pictures, but I think it's several JPEGs of the scene you're looking at. And then for each picture, it's right into focus for cer certain areas of sharpness. And then it kind of spits out an image, and you can tap anywhere on the image, whether on the web or within the app itself, and it will focus down to that kind of layer. And so it works a lot like Lightro. The end result is a lot like the Lightro camera and how it kind of uh, showed you a web image with the that final kind of multi-layered picture. But not only do you get, I, I'd argue, a better quality picture, or at least um, better low light uh, than the Lytro, but it's crisper, I think. I think because the lens, I think I'd argue the lens on the iPhone is actually better than the lens on the Lytro. Everything's just bigger and richer. The colors are nicer. Um, it's kind of like a bit like a better Lytro. Do you know how the Lytro um, does its thing? Does it use the same... You Unicorn horns, um, mostly unicorn horns. Yeah, because I, I just asked because I remember uh, not not that long ago, um, I had a look at a neat web tool um, from like a non kind of profit um, internet hero um, group called uh, Chaos Collective, I think it was. And it was almost exactly the same as what you're talking about. So you take a DSLR. Uh, with a zoom, with a you know a, a lens, a zoomable lens, and you record like a five-second clip of you just zooming it in and out. All right. Um, and then uh, from what I can tell from the app, it actually does exactly the same thing in the background. So the tech behind it actually isn't isn't um, that advanced, and it goes through uh, all the frames, so like, like 30 fps on the DSLR, um, and looks at uh, just uh, an algorithm works out the sharpness of angles and and things yeah. like that, and then uh, obviously it's it's a uh, split up into grid into a like a grid pattern. So this um, app obviously does exactly the same thing as that, um, but it packages it in a nice, neat, accessible app, which is yeah. I mean, it's it's only two dollars, which is kind of crazy. It's a really fun toy. I really recommend if you've got an iOS device, buy it because. It's really quite cool. Um, you can get some really nice images out of it and toy ma, around with them. Ma, 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 ma. It's the Eurocast. It's one pound forty nine. You said two dollars. I can't it's remember. One, I can't remember the exchange rate. It's one pound forty nine. I checked before we came on. Do you think anyone noticed? No, but if you start again, if you start again, and just like everyone will pretend that they blinked with their ears. Okay, it's one pound forty nine. Okay, 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 cool. Ready? Go, go, go. go. Okay, go. So it's only one pound forty nine. So obviously. For British people like us, it's quite a bargain compared to a four hundred uh, dollar camera that we can't even get in this country. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but the Lightro, obviously, uh, I I imagine anyway that it might do it a little bit better. I mean, it, there's got to be some cost. I'd assume involved. there's um, a better degree to how many images because it kind of the Lightro captures everything. Well, you can definitely tell on this app. It's capturing it by stages, like the DSLR. The Lytro, yeah, so the Lytro does use a different, a yeah, different it's light field uh, way. photography. So it's very, you should definitely read up about it because it's kind of crazy technical and awesome. But yeah, it kind yeah, of captures the, everything in it an makes instant. Sense that the this app and the thing that I was talking about before, it mm. makes it, it's uh, it's very really easy to understand about how they make it happen. So I wouldn't want to necessarily compare it to the Lytro because I imagine that that isn't just hardware that I guess that the is point dedicated, is the Lytro is kind this of dedicated app. If you yeah, see I mean, what I mean, so, I mean, it's a comparison to the Lytro in that you get that very usable, very interactable final product, and it's very easy to share. Changeable. Yes, it's mm. so cool. I love it. I'm going to play with it now. Are we segueing? I'm pretending that my connection's got cut. Yeah, let's uh, segue away. Dan, are you there? 
I'm, he I'm did always a nice here. emergency segue before when I was ranting. The nice emergency segue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I blame this this poor connection. Um, and we can blame Dan. The, so yeah. So um, uh, it's time for reader questions. I'm just going to check that there haven't been any more reader questions since the last time I checked. Um, someone wants an edible Android tablet because they're hungry. If you find out who makes one, please let me know. And um, a proper question from Michael in London, and he asks, what will the protocol be for using Google Glass in British society, on the tube, and in the pub? Which I think is interesting. A very I'm, interesting question, yeah, great I'm question. thinking, would you, would you be forced to take your Google Glass off before you pop to the toilet? Knowing your lifestyle, Dan, I'd say you probably wouldn't. <laughs> but the rest of us might. Um, <laughs> I hate you so it's good. much. I'm really glad that this. Uh, um, is it Mike? Michael. Uh, Michael asked this because actually, us the three of us are on the officially sanctioned governmental task force to decide when and where you'll be able to use Google Glass. Um, I will be pushing for the ability to creepily slow wink at anyone you find even marginally attractive in any location at any time. And what, will that take a picture of them? No, it's just me winking, because uh, I can't afford a real Google Glass. So. Oh, I see, well, I see. I think <laughs> the, the, interesting, the interesting point is not, um, uh, when you think about Google Glass in somewhere like, like an airport or something like that, uh, you know, there, there isn't going to be policy changes there, because it's a camera. You know, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. if it's a heart or whatever, and and that's what what won't change. People won't be like, "Hey, man, but I, but I bought glass." It's like, yeah, you know, Although but, I feel uh, why like can't it, I use my glass? Yeah. I the thing is, it could kind of fall into the other way. I think the example of how bad it could get is how you can't use an e-ink reader on a plane. Or so yeah, they'd be I, happy. I, the kind of place you'd be, they'd be happy for you to take a smartphone in, but not Google Glass. Mm. No. But it's more. But forgetting the the um, uh, the man bringing us down, it's more I social policy, like social policy. How is Google Glass going to affect that? You know, yeah. because I can imagine um, walking into Google Glass with Google Glass in a pub in the East End somewhere and just getting beaten up. Yeah, but you'd get well, beaten up even if you weren't wearing. <laughs> Google Glass. It no, that's not true. I, I just beat everyone else up. <laughs> that's true. He is really hard. Yeah. Um, it depends which bit of the East End, because I'm sure some of it will be like, oh my god, what's what's this crazy fashion? Oh no, yeah, I don't mean face? I don't mean the hipster East End. But it's like um, you know how gyms banned um, like the modern iPod Touch and the most recent um, iPods, which had cameras in them. Because they said that what was happening was um, unscrupulous people were wandering into the changing rooms and just taking the odd sort of quick snap. Um, Sweet. It's almost like you basically anywhere um, where there are people, almost instantly there's going to be Google Glass bans. So because you know at gyms, at pubs, because you know people people when they're talking at the pub don't want their conversations on record because. Um, that's like them unwinding and relaxing and everything else. But it's the same issues you have with smartphones now. It's just a little less yeah. obvious. I guess but the thing is it kind of has more subterfuge, isn't it? A Google Glass is almost it's subtler. There's no... You, Do you really? Know. Really? You think it's, you think it's yeah, more well, subtle? Everyone's... Having a camera yeah, strapped to your face, pointed at you. Hypothetically, if it becomes de facto and people are wearing them like they're wearing normal glasses or that's hairbands, bad. that's the point. I mean, yeah. The first few people... It's, it's funny. I, maybe I'm kind of too far in the game being a tech writer, but I don't see them being as kind of awkward as Bluetooth, but maybe I'm just deluded. You know, Bluetooth headsets that people talk yeah. into? I find them super weird. But Google Glass is fine. Also, I don't think Google Glass is going to be a mainstream device. You know, it's... You we won't, can quote you him won't. on this, can't we, in 10 years' time? Do you know what? That's going to be on Daring Fireball's clam chowder. I don't Hopefully. even know what that is. I mean, I'm but I, okay, okay. Let's let me rephrase that. Initially, you're going to have uh, a handful of people that are probably even going to be able to afford it. You know, um, you're not going to have. It's not going to be like uh, the new uh, Xbox or the new um, 
uh, Nintendo DS or something that you pick up for Christmas. It won't be, you know, a holiday release or uh, whatever. It's not that kind of product. So um, it's hard to really think about every situation in which... Don't, but don't you think Google's kind of already... It's spinning it that way. You have these very exclusive, very expensive initial models. So they can do, like, alpha testing and beta testing on a huge oh, well, range I of people, suppose, yeah, I on a huge it, different it selection on, of use cases. And that price is going to tumble. Hardware, tumble. you know, yeah. I mean, I'm pro- I'll get. I'll definitely get one. Um, <laughs> I can't, I just, I just... Because yeah, you're asking think, to be beaten up in East End pubs. Dan, I think our, just, our severe powers of um, convincement have turned <laughs> Jamie's opinion around 180. <laughs> I'm so fickle. I'm so you are fickle. quite fickle. Don't worry. I'm, see, I'm... I'm uh, I don't know whether I'd buy one. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Um, I struggle to work out what I would use it for, apart from maybe walking down the street and then and then pretending I was in Peep Show and narrating it afterwards and then uploading <laughs> those videos onto YouTube. I but I could do that valid, with any... That's a valid use, though, of Google Glass. Because I'd be judging everyone and be like, oh, I don't like her shoes. Don't like but his I bet face. You'd, you'd think you were talking in an internal monologue, but you'd actually be saying it out loud, I imagine. But then it, I wouldn't need to re-record it after that. So True. there is a benefit to that. I definitely want to try yeah. one. I'm not sure if I'm willing to pay that huge chunk of money to buy it's one. Like, it's like ones. 800 or 900 quid if you convert it. But I guess, like, how much is a Nexus? How much was the Nexus for when it came out in the UK? It's like 100 and something pounds? Yeah, sub, sub 200, yeah. So the fact is that within four generations of a device, Google has gone from you know, this premium flagship to be for it to be cheaper than almost every other uh, sort of device of the same caliber around. So I can't imagine that Google wouldn't um, wouldn't be able to shave huge, yeah. huge amounts of money off that price. There's not that much hardware on the specs either, is there? Uh, there's, you know, it, it's just not that big. So And it doesn't do that so... much. It does a lot of the hard thinking by pairing with something else. So you're right. I mean... There isn't that much that they need to kind of chisel away at. Um, it's more the fact that it's a brand new product. It's not like, for example, like you're saying, the Nexus phones. Smartphones with a touchscreen existed before that, so sure, sure. there was more momentum behind manufacturing. But yeah, I really want to try one. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's. I, I don't think I'm going to be turning into a life blogger by any means, but can you just imagine the day... <laughs> JamieCam.com <laughs> Can you just imagine the day you wouldn't oh, be able to sick. handle what my life is like? Um, <laughs> uh, the day when the, there's a knock on the door and that DL, DHL package is there and inside is Google Glass. Like, can you imagine? I'm My heart is pounding just thinking about it, how awesome that would be. Just straight back on... Straight back online, guys, I'm taking the next, like, eight days off because I need to... I need to play with glass. Actually, I've, I've got a question more for you, Matt, now relating to this, because you tried the Vuzix M100 at CES, which, did that have a camera in the front, or was that just a heads-up display? Oh, God, very good question. It did have a camera built in. It was a very similarly specced one. I think it was capable of 720p video. So, again, a 5 megapixel still shooter. I mean, technically, the Vuzix one is kind of... It's like the other path. I mean, Google's taken a very, a much more complicated thing with it, while the Vuzix one was a lot more tethered to the device. The device did nearly all the heavy thinking, and it was just kind of linked via Bluetooth to do the tasks required of it. See, I'm thinking now that, um, like, I, I struggle to work out a reason why, like, the head-mounted camera you can get, you can get, and you can get head-mounted displays that sort of will span your smartphone screen. But I'm still struggling to work out why I need both of those things merged together as one headset. Like, I still want to try one, but I just... cool. You see, that's not good enough. That's not good, especially if it's, it's, you know, your own money. (laughs) I agree with Jamie's opinion. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. No, obviously, obviously. uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to talk about this guy has posted posted posed an entire episode's worth of comments from this question um and i think it's selfish of him to be honest (laughs) (laughs) don't turn on the readers jim you've told you this before great question great question but i think we've probably even deviated 
so far from what he originally drink, asked. Drink your that. special Jamie tea and calm down. So okay, so let's try and let's try and answer this question. So are we saying um, in toilets, public no. toilets, home toilets? No. Um, where would you put it? Would you have to have like someone mind your Google Glass? You'd always have to go oh, out drinking with no, a friend because you you'd be like, Why "Do I feel like Dan had that ready to say?" As soon no, as this I'm question just, came in. I'm thinking like um, you know you imagine a it glasses in glasses case, but a cool one. A cool. And you put it in your pocket, yeah. See, yeah. that's a lot, lot of lot of effort. So, what about on the tube? Because you remember the racist tram woman in Croydon that got arrested because someone took us a, a picture of her. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Video, yeah. It was kind video, of. Oh yeah, yeah, open. yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, there's loads of those. Um, but then that can happen now with a smartphone, so it's the same. It's um, it's a case by case basis. But would you like? No, because I wouldn't want to get beaten up on the tube coming back from the East End pub. Stop going to East End pubs. Get a hobby. I've never been to an East End <laughs> pub in my entire life, to be honest. You probably you've probably watched Oliver the musical and think that's what East End pubs are like. That's your cultural basis. They're not that bad. Um but it's it's like um all I can imagine is really nefarious things. So you're on the tube, um and you know, if you're gonna be taking pictures you're going to be taking pictures of other people you know you don't need to document standing bored in the tube um and you can't really like you can't really read an ebook on that tiny display so what are you going to use it for you're going to use it for dodgy things um <laughs> and what about oh god i've just thought of something that's probably unbroadcastable yeah so I, probably yeah, I, no, I something that's no. completely unbroadcastable oh yeah, the more I think about it, the more the, the rules of etiquette surrounding Google Glass should be don't wear Google Glass ever. <laughs> it's another good rule. I, I agree with Dan's rule. Because, like, there's no situation in which wearing Google Glass is anything other than awkward making or bad or gives you way too much power. Well, there we go then. So, yeah. Sorry, Michael. You're not allowed to wear Google Glass anywhere now. Yeah, the, uh, the Eurocast team has ruled. Rubber stamp noise, please. <laughs> so I think I think that just about wraps it up for the, what's been quite a philosophically in depth um, uh, Eurocast. Really, are we done? I, I think I think Dan means the bit where he lost his connection. That was <laughs> yeah. kind of super intense. Well, you I mean, you say that I was staring out the window considering the the nature of the universe. So it was it was it was, you know, um, was 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 your conclusion cloudy? Uh, my conclusion was full of workmen retiring the pavement outside. <laughs> don't want to know about your personal life. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> so don't, I don't want to jinx Google Glass. it. I don't want to jinx it, but is spring actually here? No, don't jinx it. Just shut up. Shut up, Jamie. Shut up, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Shut up. Uh, so yeah, you've all been listening to the Angered Eurocast that has been sponsored by Audible. I've been joined by Jamie Rigg. Uh, thanks for having me. My Twitter handle is at J M E R I G G. But he is rubbish at it, and he does. He has admitted that he is rubbish at it. So don't bother. So following please, me. no, please follow me. Please follow me. <laughs> it's not <laughs> about the numbers. It's about what you write, man. And Matt Smith. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, at that Matt Smith, and that's Matt with one T. Don't follow him. Don't worry about me. Unfollow him. <laughs> and if you visit audible.com forward slash Engadget, you can snag an audiobook like Twilight by Stephanie Mayer completely for free. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Questions, comments, and suggestions can be sent to me at Daniel W. Cooper. And from all of us here, have a very good week. Happy springtime. Bye. Bye. Good. I knew I'd miss my calling. Can I press stop? Yes, you can press stop. I'm gonna tell James not to not to put in the theme. I'm just gonna say that we should do it. God. I can't end the I can't end the YouTube broadcast though. I have to. That's fine. They got that. <laughs> <laughs>